Ruth, Vivian and Amelia have been making music together as a trio once every few weeks for the past three years. They have learnt to listen to one another and to communicate non-verbally through their music making. Although their main point of contact is through their playing, at times the musical exchanges can be intense and moving. They continue to learn to pick up and trust each other's musical ideas. In many ways, the musical exchange that Aidan and Amelia have together during their music therapy session is very similar. Amelia and Aidan have been seeing each other for weekly half-hour sessions for seven months. Like the chamber music players, they have learnt to trust each other's music. Of course, in chamber music, the musicians play from a score and in the music therapy session, Aidan and Amelia are improvising together. But the non-verbal communication is similar, and in both cases, the exchanges are often exciting and intense. Unlike the musicians, however, Aidan, who is five, has a diagnosis of childhood autism. As a result, he has severe communication difficulties and often appears to be in a world of his own. At times he will flap his hands in a repetitive way and his play will lack apparent form or direction. To help him to focus, Amelia spends part of their music therapy sessions playfully running around the room with him. Later in the session, he can concentrate more easily and Amelia tries to give the playing a basic shape through stopping and starting. Here, the cello and the clarinet take turns to play little scale passages which answer each other. First, the scales are calm and there are small gaps in the playing. Then, as the tension builds up, there are no more gaps. The phrases become shorter. And eventually, the cello and the clarinet seem to be interrupting one another. that music happens in time and that harmonic structure can give phrases predictable and expected endings allows the music therapist to give a basic shape to fragments of time which have previously had no form or meaning. Aidan is clearly reassured by the predictable nature of the music therapy sessions. He has learnt to predict beginnings and clearly recognises this song. At the end of the guitar playing, he requests that the instrument should be put away, using language and understanding structure. 
back the guitar? Shall we put back the guitar? Unlike Aidan, Jack does not have a diagnosis of childhood autism. He is diagnosed as PDD-NOS, which means Pervasive Developmental Disorder of a Non-Specific Type. Jo Holmes, child and family psychiatrist, explains. Pervasive Developmental Disorder is an umbrella category which covers such diagnoses as Autism and Asperger's Syndrome. It also includes PDD-NOS, that is Pervasive Developmental Disorder not otherwise specified. This is the category which covers children who have autistic symptoms but don't have enough symptoms to meet criteria for autism or Asperger's syndrome. Aidan, who we saw previously, has got autism. Children with autism have impaired or abnormal development that is present before the age of three. They have difficulty in three areas. Firstly, they have difficulties in reciprocal social interactions, for example in making eye contact or using gesture. Then they have difficulties with their communication. They can have delayed or absent speech, or use words in an unusual way. And thirdly, they have restricted, stereotyped or repetitive behaviours. For Aidan, as for many children with autism, music therapy can provide a non-verbal form of communication, where some of the usual demands of speech-based communication can be bypassed. Jack has a diagnosis of pervasive developmental disorder of an unspecified type, that is PDD-NOS. As you can see, he initially appears not to want to engage with Amelia. However, his response at the end of the singing shows that he was listening and attending to her. Later, as in Aidan's session, the music making process allows Jack to communicate with Amelia more directly. Here, Jack becomes very involved and excited. He shows creativity and imagination by initiating a game of peekaboo with the camera that is filming him. Matthew, who is three, also has a diagnosis of childhood autism. From the beginning, he made it clear that he wanted to share his sessions with his mother. Bang! Bang! Oh, 
Ven. Ven. In the sessions, he flits from one thing to another, but occasionally the music therapist is able to engage him in brief, playful musical exchanges. Later in the session, she tries to echo his movements and noise exchanges with his mother. She reinforces the strong and healthy bond between mother and child. During the session, Matthew often chooses to withdraw from the adults by going behind a screen at one end of the room. However, he continues to communicate through vocal sounds and particularly responds to Amelia's clarinet playing. Towards the end of the session, he is able to have a brief exchange with Amelia on the piano. Matthew has made great progress since he and his mother started weekly individual music therapy sessions six months previously. His mother is convinced that the sessions have enabled Matthew to use sounds and later words to communicate. Yeah, because at first he wasn't he wasn't using any speech, just sounds. Whereas since he's come to music therapy, he he's definitely started talking and and vocalising a lot more. So it's uh, brought me to tears a couple of times seeing the way Matthew's been. Where when we first came, especially he really, you know. He he done some things then that he's never never done before, which is really really good. Oh. 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 Young babies communicate with their mothers through non-verbal sound exchanges, which can be very similar to the interactions in music therapy sessions. Here, Claire has a conversation with her seven-month-old son, Jamie. Because they are not motivated to communicate, many children like Aidan, Jack and Matthew will have never experienced these babbling exchanges as babies. The music therapist can recreate these types of dialogues through improvised sound exchanges, which can, as in Matthew's case, then lead to the development of speech. Another reason why music therapy is an effective means of communication is that sound exchanges and turn-taking can be playful and fun. Musicians here also take turns, 
and there is a humorous side to Brahms' music in this passage. Just as these musicians have to work together as a team, professionally qualified music therapists cannot treat clients in isolation. Amelia discusses her work with parents after every session and liaises with other professionals, such as speech therapists and teachers, to discuss the progress the children are making and to agree on treatment objectives. In addition, Amelia has fortnightly supervision with an experienced clinician to discuss any aspects of the work she is worried about. I think over the years I've specialised in working with children with communication disorders. Whereas lots of different children will benefit from music therapy, children with communication disorders or children on the autistic spectrum often seem to only be able to communicate through music. So I suppose what happens is I will see those children because sometimes I can help them make some progress and then that will be a stepping stone to communicate in other areas. So I suppose what happens in my caseload that I, is that I have to balance assessments, music therapy assessments for the new children with ongoing treatment and you know make sure I've got enough time to do both things and sometimes it's quite hard discharging clients especially when you become attached to the children. Yes. It's okay, I think, when I feel that a child has made a lot of progress and they've developed language and they are now able to communicate through other means other than music. Sometimes then what happens is that it's the parents that don't want to give up the music therapy. So I have to help them see that um, stopping music therapy isn't a negative thing, but it's actually a positive move. Mm. And I'm not abandoning their child, but the child is now ready for um, is now able to communicate in other ways. I wanted to get your opinion on a little boy I've been working with. Um, this is Jamie, who's four, and I've been seeing him for about five months uh, every week. Um, he's got Lowe's syndrome, which is a very rare syndrome, and Jamie is um, little learning disabled and has some autistic features. You'll see he's very responsive to music and um, I want to show you various aspects of the work. And in the first clip you'll see how um, I'm listening and matching his sounds and his rhythms on the guitar. drum, you can see how very involved he gets in his playing. And then later you'll see there's a nice example of how we're playing together musically. And he's on the slip drum there and I'm on the piano. worried about because it's the end of the session and Jamie's a bit tired and he's lying on the mat and what's happening is that I'm playing with him on the mat and I suppose what worries me is you know is it okay as a music therapist to be just playing and not using any instruments.
think it's fine because you're using sound, you're using yourself to, to uh, integrate the child into the, the therapy. And I also think that while if you're using sound, you are being less rigid, so you're adapting to the child's need. He's tired, so he won't be able to perform in the traditional way. And I found it delightful the way you um, were with him there. Now I'd like to show you an example of Sarah. If you remember, we've talked about her before. Mm -hmm. She's um, the little five-year-old autistic girl. Here we're playing the piano together and she's quite responsive to the music but it's all round some toys that she's brought in and although she's responding well and we're communicating I'm so, I feel as I'm forcing the issue. In a sense I feel that if I went into a corner of a room with her and just played cars I'd get just as much and I'd be able to communicate just as much with her. So I, I'm sort of wondering what I'm doing. It looks as though you have come up to the end of your piece of work with, with her. She's communicating very well, she's using music therapy, therapy extremely well, mm. and maybe it's time to stop seeing her. Yes, you may well be right. I've been working with her for about a year now, which is a long time. Um, there's quite a lot of pressure from um, Mum for me to go on. They're very keen on the work. I'm a little bit concerned because she's about to start school. She hasn't really had very much social contact. I'm a bit worried that I shouldn't make a change just now because I think we've gone as far as we can in our relationship through music. There has to be a change, but maybe it can be a slow change that we can look at either group work or working with her, her working with someone else, another child. Jingle! Jingle! Amelia decided that Aidan and Sarah might work very well together. After several sessions together, you can see how at times Amelia still has to sing or play with each of the children individually and they are quite isolated. But at other times, the music draws them together. Later in the session, all three play the piano together. Sometimes both children need help to remain focused. At one point, all three look up at Pooh Bear, who is hanging in a balloon from the ceiling and play about him.
After 18 months of individual music therapy sessions with his mother, Matthew also moved on to group sessions. Here he is being seen by Joe Storey, another music therapist who works in the special school which Matthew goes to. There are two other children and an adult helper with Matthew in this session. Matthew is now able to listen and be part of the group. Matthew's language and his verbal understanding have progressed sufficiently for him to make choices within the group. Towards the end of the session, Matthew enjoys playing a solo, with Joe on the flute. Although you can still see some autistic mannerisms, his ability to concentrate has increased and he is still irresistibly drawn by the music. Sometimes children with autism will benefit from larger music therapy groups. Only some of the children in this group are diagnosed as being on the autistic spectrum, but they all have language or communication difficulties of some kind. The children attend a special class in a mainstream school, which consists of eight children and is staffed by three adults. Amelia works very closely with the teacher, Keith, reviewing the children's progress and discussing the work every week. Josh, now you know you said a few weeks ago, you said there's a tempo which sets yes, him off. Yes, yes. And I was experimenting with it today and it's blatant. Oh, she's keeping us going. Keeping us waiting here. We've all got to be ready. Playing as a group helps the children to listen to each other and react to one another, as well as enjoying playing themselves. Here, Joshua enjoys leading the group from the xylophone and the children respond well to him, counting his solo in.
In this clip, a clarinet game helps the children to take turns or follow cues. This again relies on listening and waiting, which are among the key skills inherent in all music making. In music therapy with children on the autistic spectrum, as in chamber music playing, the joint music-making process lays the foundations for non-verbal communication. <laughs> 